Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. <laughs> it's Come On Now, the podcast, and y'all are rocking with Nikki T on another great segment of Lockdown, baby. <laughs> and first of all, I'd like to thank all our new subscribers, old subscribers, and the people that are going to subscribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, as we are over the 4,200 mark for subscribers um please hit that subscribe button right now and keep on supporting us man but on this segment of lockdown with nick taylor three-time great cup champion db former nfl player arena football player division one basketball player which has nothing to do with this one right now because we are talking football the football season has started and we started off with the Chiefs again, again, beating the Baltimore Ravens. And that came with a lot of controversial plays, a lot of chit chat. People are in their feelings, but it's football. You play the game on the field, you live with the results. It's never going to be perfect. But they got the call right. There are 92 angles in today's football on the field of the cameras. And all 92 angles said that Izell likely stepped out of bounds. It was clear as day. Clear as day. Lamar Jackson did not think so. He said it was a touchdown. I still think it was a touchdown. And I stand on that. The same way Isaiah likely was standing out of bounds. <laughs> he was out of bounds. It was a clear as day. And as the leader of the team, to go in the press conference after that game, after you clearly saw that your player was out of bounds, to say that, it shows the lack of maturity that that team and Lamar Jackson has right now. What you should go in there and say, hey, we didn't make the plays. We didn't get the job done. We was an inch away. But I've seen a lot of things tonight that has me confidence in this season, confident in this season, that if we play this team later on, when it matters, that we can get it done. Not blaming it on the referees and the challenge boot that they didn't get the call right when they clearly did it. They clearly did. As the leader of the team, the leader that you are supposed to be this year, you go in that press conference and you stand 10 toes down and you acknowledge that y'all lost the game. You didn't get it done. You weren't good enough tonight. But it's game one of 17 in the regular season. And hopefully three, four games in the postseason, and then y'all will get it done later on. Nobody wants to hear the excuses. And you are a big part of y'all not getting it done. You had one, two, three opportunities to make the throw for your team to tie the game or y'all score and y'all go for two in Kansas City and y'all get the win. It was all in your hands, Lamar. And I'm not a Lamar hater. I love the guy. I love how he plays. And I thought he played with a chip on his shoulder last night because he wanted to prove something. They were in the game because of Lamar. Nobody else. That team is the same. They got the same problems that I came into the season doubting them for and over the past couple of years. They still have no outside threat. Nobody's on the outside for Lamar to throw the ball to. Not Rashad Bateman. Lord have mercy, not Nelson Aguilar. The same Nelson Aguilar who on a fourth and one or two, he leaves 
He doesn't block the guy that's in front of him. He leaves that guy who's on the outside containment where you're throwing the ball to to go block the safety all the way in the middle of the field who has no chance of making a play when they need a first down on a big fourth down. That's the outside receivers that they're depending on. So once again this year, the Baltimore Ravens are stuck on throwing the ball inside the, the hash lines of Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews. And Isaiah Likely can ball. He's stepping up. He's going to be the number one option, him and Zay Flowers. But Zay Flowers is not an outside receiver. He's more of a slot guy. And that's another problem. That's, what, that's why they won't win. Unless they have leads and can control the game on the inside, they're going to run uh, 12 formation all game with two tight ends or 13 formations with real big heavy sets. That you, you have to have to have an outside threat. And that's what my biggest concern for this team. And it reared its ugly head again. But onto Lamar Jackson, you have a chance to make two throws to tie the game. The third one was of great throw. Isaiah just didn't get the foot down. The first two, you have to make your layups. The Isaiah likely, you just throw it to him flat down the line, or you lob it up and you keep the ball in the bounce. You don't throw it out of bounds. The second one, he said he wasn't throwing it to Zay Flowers. He was throwing it to Bateman or Aguilar, whichever one, who wasn't open, but you had to say, if you missed that, I'd rather you say, I just missed him, rather than say, you know, I missed it throwing it to Zay than saying I was trying to throw it to somebody else because Zay was wide but booty naked. <laughs> who else were you trying to throw it to in this moment? He's the guy. He's wide open. And you missed that, though. You missed the other receiver, and you missed it. You threw it in the middle. But these are layups that has to be made. And I hate to say this, guys. I don't want to even bring this up. But that was the Angel Reese of layups. These were easy plays to make. And he threw the ball over the rim. Just, just threw the ball over the rim. It was a really an Angel Reese moment. Wide open, fast break, by yourself. All you got to do, right leg, left foot. Left leg, right foot. You put it on the backboard. It goes in nice and easy. Those are the plays that is holding Lamar Jackson back from being great. He has to make those throws in these moments at the end of the game. He's not a dynamic thrower, but he's a well enough thrower to make that throw. I can make that throw, and I play these beats. My mama could, could make, no, she can't. But y'all get the drift of where I'm going with that. That's a throw for a professional quarterback who's a top paid quarterback in this league that he has to make at that moment. Plain and simple. If they want to be the championship team that they need to be, he has to make that throw. Another big thing that happened with that team, the big acquisition of Derrick Henry. Guys, he's done. He's finished. He's no longer Derrick Henry. From what I've seen in that game, and y'all going to say, oh, he didn't get enough carries. They didn't, they didn't feature him enough. They tried to. And when you're getting one yard, one yard, two yards, and we're behind the line, we're behind the eight ball every time, second and eight, it's third and seven because we're giving him the ball early in the downs, and he's not getting us any yards, and he's getting thrown on his back twice. You are six foot three, 250 pounds. Why am I seeing you on your back? Get your big ass and lower your pads and run through somebody. But he's not a trucker. That's never been his style. He can break tackles, but he's not a run through you guy. He's a stiff arm you guy. And he little he has more speed. He has, actually has good speed. But I saw him yesterday. Is out of out of he's not comfortable with the offense yet, or he's just lost a step. He didn't have a first that I used to see him with. He's done. Stick a fork in him. You know, when running backs hit 30, that's why other teams, they don't pay running backs because by the time they hit their fourth, fifth year, it's like, well, I'm going to give him this big-ass contract to be good for two years or one year. 
and he reached that part of the time of his career at 34 running back, that's when usually they fall off. They fall off that cliff. Y'all know that cliff Max Kellerman kept talking about? Derrick Henry on that cliff. And that's why Lamar Jackson had to run the ball as much as he did yesterday. Because he's still dynamic. Lord have mercy, he's fast as shit. He has gained every ounce of speed that he, he looked like he lost last year. He found it back this year. But Derrick Henry, the big acquisition, he's not going to be the guy that gets them over the hump. I've seen enough one game. I'm like, oh, it's only one game, Nick. Sometimes that's all you need to see. I don't need to see more than that. I, I've seen it. My two eyes said he lost the step. He lost that oomph that makes him great. He no longer, he's no longer Derrick Henry. He's a back. He's just another guy in the backfield who has the name of Derrick Henry. But he's no longer Derrick Henry. And we clearly saw that last night. Can this team still be good this year? I think they can. As long as you got Lamar Jackson, you have to shoot a fighter's chance to be a good team. And at the end of the day, as bad as people think they play, the game came down to Lamar Jackson making the throws at the end of the game. And they didn't get it done. Another problem I had. Oh, my gosh. The old lineman. The old lineman. Staley, you get four penalties in that game that cost your team. Illegal formation, legal formation, legal formation, legal formation. And you say, I challenged them to keep making that call all year. What? If you don't get your big ass up on the line, and he called it on you once, he called it on you twice, he gave you a warning, just step up. You're literally looking at the line of scrimmage. You literally are sitting next to the guard. And you're telling me that, you know, well, the Chiefs players were doing it. So I, if the Chiefs players jumped off the bridge, would you jump off the bridge too? No. Get your big ass up on the line of scrimmage. You're costing the team. You keep making the same mistakes. That's foolish penalties you're getting. They called it on you, bro. Make an adjustment. And I agree. I thought, I thought Taylor, or, or what's the what's guy? What's the old lineman name? Jawan Taylor. I'm right. Jawan Taylor. I thought he was a little bit in the backfield, but they didn't call it on him. They didn't. They kept calling it on you. So what you have to do is adjust. Make the simple adjustment by getting your behind on the line of scrimmage. And these are the excuses are, that is dooming Baltimore from winning the championship. And it starts with the quarterback. Now trickle down to the old lineman. And now you have your tight end who's becoming a stud going in the media and say, hey, we played a bad game. And if that's the Chiefs' good game, then when we see them in the playoffs, y'all have never, y'all have not been able to get over the hump of this team. But now all of a sudden you, you, you want to psych your delusional. They all are delusional on this team. And if they don't get in the right mindset, they're going to be in another team with never got the job done when they have the talent to get it done. They have the talent. They are good enough. They are definitely good enough. But, 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 but it's plain and simple. It starts with the quarterback. And if he can't make layups, he's going to keep – Angel Reese in these layups. I hate to keep bringing her name up, but that's the only person I can think about that don't make layup as a professional. And now it's Lamar Jackson. You have to make these layups. The tough throws, we know you can make it. But to be great at the position that you play, we know you do all the other dynamic things to keep them in the game and, and make Baltimore a phenomenal team. But you have to make the easy throws. And that will doom them for the rest of the season. I still like them as a team. I don't know if mentally they are there yet to be that team. Tell me what y'all think. Does Baltimore have a chance this year? I, I'm open. I'm open for conversation. I want to hear what y'all think. Like after seeing one game, is one game of 17 for the regular season. I get that. I, this is what we do. We, we're going to jump off the, off the bridge every game. Every game, we're going to overanalyze, overanalyze, overanalyze. But some of this shit is right. I mean, if they don't correct some of these things, 
then these will linger on the whole year. And there will be another great team that didn't get over the hump when they had all the talent, everything working for them. Just like last year when they got the home game against the Chiefs and they didn't get it done. So this year, got to find a way. But that's all I got on last on yesterday's game. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Does Baltimore have a chance? Are they playoff, you know, are they Super Bowl contenders? Or are they just another team that's going to fool us for the whole regular season and thinking that they're contenders and get ultimately to the time when they need to play tough, rugged football and not get it done again? Is it the quarterback? Is it the play calling? Is it all of the above? Is it the mindset? Got to have the mindset to be great. You can be, have an average mindset, be an average team. And that's where they're trending to be. Holla at us, man. This is Come On Now, the podcast. This is the segment called Lockdown with Nick Taylor. As we weigh in on the top games of the week, we'll bring out all the football content as much as we can for most of the year. As the football season keeps going, um, it'll be me, my great host, Rudy. And this is Come On Now, the podcast, man. Hit that subscribe button. Tell us what you think.